Once again, good evening, everyone. This is Jim Frankel from Music First. We will get started in one more minute. Thank you all very much for attending, and uh, I really hope you enjoy uh, tonight's diversion away from all the craziness that you're probably experiencing at the moment. So again, we'll get started in a minute. We are recording the webinar, um, and we will send a, uh, a link to that recording uh, either sometime tonight or early tomorrow morning. Again, we'll get started very soon. Okay, here we go. Um, let's let's dive right in, shall we? Uh, all right. Um, I never thought I would put a subtitle like this on any webinar I have ever uh, delivered in the past, but uh, tonight is a pedagogical pedagogical approach to teaching music classes online. Um, we are all dealing with this COVID nineteen um, epidemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we're all being thrust into a new frontier, some of us uh, with almost no experience doing so. So tonight's webinar uh, is all about how you can get this going. And from a pedagogical standpoint, some of the philosophical thoughts I have about um, what to do and what not to do, it's all meant to be helpful. And uh, I really hope that you appreciate it. Again, uh, my name is Jim Frankel. I am the founder and director of Music First. Uh, and uh, my doctoral dissertation, as well as over the last 30 years, I've been obsessed with music technology and education. And over the last 12 years, I've been doing extensive online training. So I think I've got some uh, relatively good experience uh, and, and that should help everyone out. So here we go. Um, let's first look at the objectives for tonight. Uh, we're gonna start with the realities of teaching music online and managing expectations, uh, both students' expectations, parents, yours, and even the administrators. Um, a lot of you have been just basically thrust into the woods and said, go. Um, so we'll look at what, what you can do and what you really shouldn't expect to be able to do. We're gonna look at rethinking your music curriculum uh, for the online world. A lot of music teachers are trying to figure out how to do exactly what they're doing right now. And while you can, you can kind of do it, it's a great opportunity to think of other ways uh, you can rethink your curriculum. We're going to look very briefly at the <coughs> SAMR model. By the way, you will hear me cough from time to time. It has nothing to do uh, with any virus. I have a stress cough, and as I'm sure you'd imagine, um, it's a very stressful time. So we're going to then go into video conferencing options and look at the pros and cons of video conferencing with your students live. Uh, we're going to look at screen capture software. Um, the SAMR model, I'll explain. We'll look at screen capture software options, and uh, we'll look at the options that are available uh, for you. Um, we're going to talk about making asynchronous learning as engaging as possible. Um, we're going to look at five different types of asynchronous activities that will engage your students. We will uh, talk about not just focusing on performance, but looking at some other aspects of a music curriculum that you typically overlook um, because you're, you know, there's so little uh, precious rehearsal time. By the way, I, I did I did see that there are some audio issues. It, it is working. There there should be a uh, in the bottom corner a uh, audio option next to your microphone. Click on that. Select the speaker. You should be good to go. All right. That's the last. I'm going to shut down the. Um, uh, chat window so I can focus on this. Um, then we're going to look at the Music First classroom, and many of you are either brand new to Music First, hopefully a lot of you are returning customers looking for some ideas, um, and maybe a bunch of you have signed up for our free extended demo that we're offering right now to schools that are facing closures, and it's looking like that's going to be a nationwide thing sooner or later. Um, so we're going to look at what the Music First classroom actually is, and some activities that you can do with your students tomorrow. We're going to look at the Music First content library, which in this, in this particular um, experience is a godsend, in my opinion, because there's 
hundreds and hundreds of pre-made tasks and assessments that you don't have to take time making on your own. We also have complete pre-made courses that can serve as a curriculum for the entire period of the closure. And then last but not least, I'll talk about some resources. Again, I will no longer be answering questions from the chat box. I will count on my Music First staff to try to do that as well as each other. So here we go. The realities of teaching your music classes online, managing expectations. Think of your students. Uh, I have two children. Uh, they're both freaking out. They're thinking they'll never be able to see their friends again, and they're thinking about all the experiences they're missing, and it's real. So they're probably just as stressed as you are. So to over, you know, over expect that these kids are going to be doing assignments every single day is just not realistic in my opinion. Almost none of them have ever experienced online learning. You might be teaching kids who are, you know, between the ages of five and 10. You might have high school kids. And I'll bet that almost none of you have experienced teaching those kids online completely, not seeing them in person. And most importantly, who knows what they are dealing with at home? We don't know um, our, our students' individual situations. <clears throat> so you can't make assumptions that they're going to have internet, that they have a phone. Um, th this is not... Uh, especially, you know, New York City public schools are closed. Um, uh, do you think that uh, all 1.1 million of those students have access to technology? The answer is definitely not. So you have to rethink or, or manage the expectations of, from what you're going to get back for them. And for goodness sake, what about the students with exceptionality, special needs students, students with IEPs, ESL students? How about a differentiated instruction? I don't necessarily have answers to all of these, but what I'm saying is you should consider them when you're creating activities for your students to do online in your music class. You cannot just assume that every kid has a webcam and can join a virtual band rehearsal. Uh, think of your students' parents. They are absolutely stressed too. I, I can tell that I'm telling you from firsthand experience. Um, definitely, you know, fearful of the unknown and would love, love some answers and would like to press fast forward and get this thing over with already and keep everyone as safe as possible. Student, the parents are going to be extremely appreciative of your efforts because for many of them, they're stressed that they have to look after their students and possibly not go to work. So for you to take some time and bring some joy to those students' lives will be very much appreciated by the parents. So my, my charge to all of you is to rise to become the true rock stars that you are. This is a moment for music to shine. Think of yourself. Please don't forget that these are uncharted waters for you. <laughs> and you're probably just as stressed as everyone else. So make time for self-care. To think that you're going to spend from 7.42 a.m. till 2.50 p.m. every day online teaching that whole time is completely unrealistic. And if your administrators are asking you to do that, they will soon change their tune because it's just not going to happen. So make sure you leave some time for breaks. Go out and take a walk. Don't watch the darn news. Um, you know, get some coffee, uh, talk with people, do a puzzle. Make sure that you're giving yourself brain breaks. Students will understand if things don't go according to plan, I promise. Most importantly, <coughs> if you're using products like Google Classroom, which are fabulous and free, the downside is that you have to make everything from scratch often. Um, so it's probably uh, no news to you that if you know you make an online Google form quiz, uh, it probably takes two or three times as long as if you were to just write it down on a piece of paper. So creating instructional materials online is a time consuming process. So again, you need to slow your pace, simplify everything you're doing. Pace yourself, pace your students, do not try to do too much. Shoot for one or two meaningful activities per week for your classes. That's it. For you to think that you're going to have to show up on a video every day from 9.08 a.m. till 9.52 a.m. and have kids show up is just simply unrealistic. And I'm trying to manage your expectations about this because um, many of you probably have the best intentions and think that you're going to do that. But I guarantee you over time you'll realize just how difficult it is to do. So rethink your music curriculum for this online world. I found this fantastic graphic about what things you can do and what things you shouldn't do. This is by an educator named Allison Yang who teaches in Thailand. You can look it up. 
Um, but what she is recommending strongly, and this is somebody who has experience exclusively in the online instruction world, that asynchronous learning is what you should focus on, meaning non-live instruction, posting and you know things for your students to do and giving them time to do it. Synchronous learning is extraordinarily difficult to do well. It's possible, very, very difficult to do well. And you might get frustrated and so might the kids. Less is more, okay? That's uh, reinforcing the simplify it. You know, with your fifth grade general music class, give them a, a project and give them two weeks to do it and check in with them once a week. Give very detailed instructions. If you're unclear and vague, you just simply will, you'll be answering a lot of email questions from kids going, how do I do this? You don't have the time to do that. Specify your expectations. Say ex ex exactly, this is what I want you to do. This is what it should look like. <coughs> be empathetic. For goodness sake, I'm sure I don't have to say that, but man, is this ever a time to do so. Be, remember, we're human beings and we're trying to get th through this together. Communicate consistently with your students. Make sure you're checking in with them on, on your online learning space. Be online for office hours. If you are going to do live video, and I'll show you ways to do it, have a moment, have an hour during the week that says, hey, I'm going to be online. If anybody wants to join me, we can talk about how you're doing and just kind of sing songs or whatever you want to do. Um, but an online office hour is a great idea. Seek, uh, seek student feedback. Ask the kids, how's this going? Give them a one question quiz that says, you know, how do you think it went this week? Tell me what I could do differently. Don't be afraid to solicit feedback from the kids. Um, boost learning uh, retention. Obviously, the more great materials you have access to, uh, the more engaging it'll be for the kids and they'll learn a lot more. And finally, identify your lesson objectives. Tell the kids, this is what I'm trying to get from you on this assignment. So if you're a performance on ensemble director, and this might be controversial, but I'm just going to put it out there, do not try to run live rehearsals. I did see a post today that somebody did it with 60 students on Zoom. I guarantee you there were tons of audio issues, and the kids were probably had their microphones muted. Because it, it is, <clears throat> if I turned all of your microphones on right now and asked you to all sing the Star Spangled Banner, it would be an incredible mess. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the advice. You can certainly try it, but trust me on this. Live rehearsals are crazy online. In my opinion, there are a few available options that will make it a, a good experience for the kids, an effective one. So rethink it. You can do virtual rehearsals asynchronously. Tell the kids to get into groups. Um, go into a product like Soundtrap and have them each record a track of the band piece, you know, between measures 9 and 17. Virtual rehearsals are great. Have them submit that. Have them submit recordings. Say to them, for band rehearsal this week, I want you to work on measures 9 to 17, and I'd like you to record it and submit it to me. Uh, but trying to get them all to play together is a little bit crazy in this world that we're in right now. It's okay. There are plenty of other things that you can do with your performance ensembles than just rehearsing. Don't expect your students to attend live classes. I'll tell you that right now. Um, there, the schedule is out the window. I guarantee you that these kids are not going to be thinking, oh, at 807, I've got this class. Focus on creating meaningful activities that can be done on their own time when they can fit it in. Again, you don't know what they're dealing with. You don't know if they have access to the internet, <laughs> if they have to wait for their parents to get home to use their phone to do an assignment. Again, consider holding once a week live music class, like I mentioned earlier. This seems simplistic, but it's true. Online discussion boards are fabulous. Provide students with the space to ask questions and communicate with one another that doesn't involve email, right? You don't want to be inundated with emails from your kids. So if they have a question about, hey, how do you do this? Post it on a discussion board, like our chat box. Don't start sending, <laughs> if they start sending you emails, you're going to roll your eyes and say, why on earth did I ever think music teaching online would be worth it? Make a discussion post that says, hey, kids, if you're having problems, ask a question here. I'll get to it, and maybe you can help each other out. Project-based learning is perfect for online instruction. We all have heard of PBL. Create at least one project for each class that has students focus on creating content. By the way, that project could be the entire duration of your closure. We have no idea how long. I mean, today in New York, they announced that it's uh, April 1st at the minimum, at least in the district that I'm in, and possibly April 6th. It certainly can go longer than that. 
So coming up with one or two projects per class for that entire period is totally fine and realistic. Have them create music, have them compose, have them um, create movies, um, have them make their own music videos. Isn't that fun? <laughs> have them create presentations in Prezi or Google um, Slides. Uh, have them create podcasts. Kids will love making a podcast about, you know, a day in the life uh, at home when they can't be in school or something like that. Have them, have them uh, interview each other. It, it, it could be really fabulous. Have them invent. It doesn't have to be technology, by the way. Have them go around their house and invent an instrument from materials they find and post pictures of it. Post a video of them playing it. Have them record audio. Have them record video. Remember, and this is just me on a human level, this is temporary. Things will get better. You will be teaching students in person again. We just have to ride this thing out. I am just as emotional as all of you on this. We will get through it together. And I really believe that Music First Classroom is a great way to help you get through it. Remember the SAMR model. So for those of you that don't remember um, what SAMR is or never heard of it, it's kind of like Bloom's Taxonomy for technology integration. By the way, they're all good. It's just thinking a little bit further down the road. Substitution is the lowest level. You're just taking, and I'll get to this, uh, augmentation <coughs> is a little bit better, modification, and then the best is redefinition. So if you remember Bloom's taxonomy, redefinition is synthesis, if you will. So let's look at that. Substitution. Many software titles available that simply sim substitute live instruction and learning, an online quiz, having them watch a YouTube video, an online tuner, a metronome. It's just a replacement of a real, of, a, of another way you've always done it, all right? So there are plenty of things out there that can substitute. If that's your comfort level, start with that. Have the, we have hundreds of online quizzes in our Music First classroom that you could just give them as well as quizzes in some of our software titles. It's a really low impact thing on you and the kids will take a quiz and you'll get grades and, and you get started. Augmentation, maybe think about this next week. Again, there are lots of stuff out there, lots of software and resources to make practicing music engaging and interactive, right? So as we said earlier, you know, augmentation is technology is helping you do something that makes things a little bit more engaging that they, they wouldn't be able to do without it. It's not revolutionizing the way they're doing it, but if you think of our product practice first, which is similar uh, to smart music, which I'm sure you're aware of, um, that's a great activity for kids to do. It's, um, you know, practice first gives them very rich feedback. They can go, they can try things out, play, practice their instruments, sing, and it'll let them know how well they're doing. Uh, that's different than them just practicing in their room with a music stand wondering how well they're doing. That's what augmentation is. Modification really changes the way you design the learning for your students. It's not that you're totally giving them something that you couldn't do without it, but um, think of like notation software like NoteFlight or digital audio workstations like Soundtrap. And you can give these kids great ways to be creative and collaborate with each other. that would be very difficult without them. That's what modification means. So give them a notation assignment. Have them compose a melody as a warm-up exercise. And then you can post that warm-up melody for every one of the students to try to record. In a digital audio workstation, have, you know, upload a backing track there. Um, let's say that you are playing with your choir. Or you're your own accompanist. Record the accompaniment. Upload that to Soundtrap and have them get into groups of soprano, alto, tenor, bass, and each record a track. Um, you can't do that without technology, and so modifications are great. And then finally, redefinition. There's some stuff out there that just is a completely brand new way of doing things. Um, there are literally hundreds of ways to redefine your instruction. Think of Incredibox if you've never seen it before. You've got seven blinking French hipsters and you just drag costume pieces to them and they start beatboxing. That's not unlike anything else I've ever seen. It's a great resource. You know, that's a redefinition. There's many other ways as well. So video conferencing options. I see we're at 300. Wow, that's amazing. Pros and cons. Let's get into it. Um, the pros and cons. First of all, all of these tools that are here, Zoom, Skype, Uber conference, YouTube live streaming, Google Hangouts, appear.in and free conference call, 
all are giving away free subscriptions to educators. You just have to go to those sites and ask for them. The problem is, as I've mentioned earlier, imagine yourself at 12 years old on a Chromebook and your teacher says, you have to be online at this time so that we can all learn. And the kid's trying and they can't download. Some of you had uh, difficulty, you know, unmute, uh, you know, um, uh, hearing me. Um, so you can't expect that kids are just going to be able to do this without any kind of training. So limit the amount of video conferencing, in my opinion, where they're all joining on with their videos. And instead, think of other things like recording videos of yourself and posting them, having the students then consume those videos and then do something based on what you're telling them to do in them. By the way, so Zoom is great. It's what we're using right now. Um, <clears throat> consider YouTube live streaming. If you've never seen it before, go on to YouTube. In the upper right-hand corner, there is a little a camera icon. Click on it, and then it'll say go live or live stream. Click on that. Just a full caveat, you have to wait 24 hours for them to activate it. So go there tonight. And, uh, and, and start activating that. Um, li YouTube live stream is awesome. It's a one-way channel. You're live, you're talking to the kids and they can comment on the video while you're talking, but you don't have all the students uh, talking back to you, if you will. So YouTube live stream is great, it's totally free, check it out. Um, screen capturing options. By the way, let me just say one other thing. There's a lot of ways that kids can mess these things up. I had a teacher tell me that in Google Hangouts, the kids can chat with each other. Sometimes teachers don't know how to moderate an online meeting like this. In fact, most of you probably don't have experience moderating an online meeting. It's a whole different skill set. So what if the kids start posting pictures of God knows what in the chat stream? A kids can take over annotation tools and start drawing everything. They can unmute themselves and yell. So, you know, it can get a little bit crazy. So in my opinion, limit the video conferencing. Screen capturing, and this is great if you're gonna do any type of tutorial videos for your students on software or anything else for that matter, screen capturing. So here's four free options. First is QuickTime Player. It comes free on every Mac. You probably didn't know that there was a screen uh, recording tool in there. If you just search for QuickTime Player, launch it, go to the file menu, it says, start or, or I think it's start screen recording uh, and you so you can, or new screen recording click on it, um, it it asks you for permission and then you can make recordings of your screen and then post those videos in an asynchronous learning management system like music first classroom screencastify is a fantastic free add-on to your chrome browser so the only caveat there is it'll only record things that are in your chrome browser at least that's my understanding I could be wrong on that but I'm almost positive I'm right. Loom is, a, is one I hadn't heard of before. It does not only video conferencing, but screen capture software as well. They announced that they're giving away free subscriptions. It's normally not free. And then finally, screen, Screencast-O-Matic is a great way to make screen recordings so that you can post them into a, an assignment. All right, zipping right along, five examples of asynchronous activities. Here we go, a threaded discussion board. As I mentioned earlier, why don't you post a, a you know, a, hey, if you've got any questions about, you know, um, how this thing is supposed to work, post them here. Hey, let's do a listening log. I'd like everybody to listen to one piece of music that relaxes you today. Post the title of it so you can add, tell other kids, hey, go and listen to this. So a listening log, maybe a, an audio diary. Um, have them talk about what they're doing. Um, have them, they can just post their name as the, um, as the title of the discussion post and then, and then post the body and kids can uh, respond to each other. Threaded discussion boards are fabulous. Flipgrid, oh my goodness, totally free. If you've never seen it before, go check it out as soon as I'm done here. Get a free account. This is great. You create a video prompt. So it's you, it's your face and a video saying, hey kids, Today, for band rehearsal, what I'd like you to do is, is practice, again, measures 9 through, let's say, 32, and then submit the video. What the kids do is they open up that grid, they see your prompt, then they have a big green button, that they, the green, big green plus button that they click, they record themselves playing uh, that segment, and they submit it. And then all those videos, you can decide whether you want the kids to see those videos. You can turn on moderation, so they're basically hidden. Um, but you can also turn off moderation and all those videos will appear in like a gigantic Brady Bunch screen. Flipgrid is awesome. 
<coughs> and it can be integrated directly into a music first classroom task. Critiques. There are billions of videos on YouTube. Many of them think about this. What about, you know, it, it could very well be that our spring concerts are, are either canceled or, or postponed or, or God knows what. So why don't you have the kids look at the music that, they, that you'd already started working on and um, post a video of a middle school in Georgia somewhere that playing the exact same piece and have the kids comment on it. Right. There is um, tons of fantastic. I'm sure you, I don't need to tell you hundreds and hundreds, thousands of, of appropriate videos uh, that will fit into your curriculum that you can post and have the kids write responses to. Creative projects. Obviously, note flight, sound trap, all the other things that are out there. We also have a product called Soundation. We've got uh, O Generator, which is a beat making app. Really cool. Um, have the kids create. I guarantee you that an event like this is going to be very inspirational in terms of uh, creativity. The kids are going to come up with all kinds of things. Um, it might be a bit off color, but they can make COVID-19 songs. For some of you might go, no way, Jim, and that's fine. Um, I'll leave it up to all of you what kind of prompts you would give your students. But don't only think of music technology um, solutions. Again, this uh, you'll see there the little um, shoebox guitar with rubber bands and a paper towel uh, you know, role. Um, these kids are going to be looking for stuff to do, looking for projects to do. Have them go around and invent an instrument and record a video of themselves playing it, maybe singing along with it, and submitting that video on a Flipgrid. Give the kids a week to, to make an instrument. Pretty cool. And last but not least, I love the idea of music videos, especially these kids are going to be home, cabin fever times 10 for two weeks, Right, so say, hey, you can make your own music video and post it. Can you imagine a family having quality time making a music video for a project? Um, I know right now that that would be the most welcome distraction in the world, is if my daughter said, hey, dad, can we take an hour to try to make a project for my school? I would love it, because I could think about something else for an hour. Have the, have the parents and the kids make a music video. Again, it's all, um, you know, it, it all it comes down to your individual teaching situation. But don't only think of uh, technology. Think of other things that kids can do. And then drill, practice, and assess. This is the perfect time to build kids' sight reading skills, ear training skills, music theory skills. Have them practice, for goodness sake. If ever, you know, as I used to be a middle school band director, the, my mantra was please, for the, you know, please practice kids. Now with a, with a tool like Practice First, which we're offering free on this extended demo, the kids can be playing their scales. They can be playing music that you create for them or music that you assign them from our, our library. And audio recordings and video recordings. Have them make once a week. Have them record themselves, uh, you know, an, doing an assignment that you've given them. But can you imagine if these kids were doing this, how great their sight reading chops would be, how great their ear training can be, their music theory skills, as well as their practicing, their singing. Um, this could be a really great opportunity to improve the musicianship skills because you're not spending the time rehearsing, but instead building up their individual skills. <laughs> All right, so let's look at what Music First is. It is the only comprehensive learning management system that was made for K-12 music education. Everything else has kind of been retrofit for it, I promise. So Google Classroom, they weren't thinking of music teachers. And how Music First is differentiated from ever, anything else is that it combines learning management software with engaging content. We've got thousands of pieces of content ready to go and powerful integrated software. We've got nine software titles available to you for free during this extended demo period. And that can help you monitor your students' progress, make lesson plans, and create assignments. When this whole thing started, I said, oh my goodness, this platform is the perfect solution. Compatibility, it works on everything. Some of my competitors' products that are out there, I won't point them out individually, but they have restrictions on what kind of devices you can use them on. Music First has spent years making sure that we work on every single device, Mac, PC, Android, iOS. Um, the most important thing to remember <coughs> is the kids have to have access to Chrome. So if they've got Chromebooks, they're all set. If they've got a Mac or a PC laptop, they need to use Chrome. If they're using a Samsung Galaxy, it already uses Chrome. 
And if they're using an iOS device, unfortunately, they have to download a free app. It's just a little extra layer of complexity. There's the Music for a Student app. Um, they have to download it, install it, and they use their login information on that app to get to everything, right? So uh, it, it's only iOS, that's iPad, iPhone, that you need that app for. Here's the software that we're offering. Focus on Sound is an encyclopedia of musical instruments, and it's an incredible music dictionary. I'm gonna show it to you briefly. Uh, it's got hundreds and hundreds of pre-made quizzes. O Generator is a beat making app. Every kid wants to make beats. It's like Fruity Loops in a circle. Very, very cool. The kids will love it. Practice First is our performance assessment for singing, instruments, multi, uh, so polyphonic instruments like guitar and piano work with it beautifully. Uh, it's fantastic. And, and we've spent so much time perfecting the algorithm. It's accurate and that's extremely important and it gives really rich feedback. Sight Reading Factory is just the best tool there is for sight reading. Um, it's fabulous, and we're, we're giving that as part of these subscriptions. Aurelia is the, is the best-selling ear training software. Musician is the best-selling music theory software out there. NoteFlight Learn is the, is the granddaddy of them all. They started this whole thing in 2008, by far the most robust notation program online, and it gives a real run for its money for stuff that's locally installed as well because of the collaboration and sharing aspects of it. Soundtrap, amazing company, uh, really user-friendly. The kids love it. Um, it works on every single device. We also offer Soundation for Education, and the main differentiator between those two is that Soundation does not work, unfortunately, on iOS devices. So a lot of teachers opt for Soundtrap, but Soundation is excellent. It looks just like Logic. It's got some really great, powerful tools in there, so don't overlook it. Definitely check it out. But Soundtrap just works on every single device, and that's why it's so popular with our customers. All right. We've got four ways that we can use software with the kids. You can make generic tasks, which is literally a couple of button clicks, and wham, you've got the assignment. You don't have to do a lot of work yourself. The kids go and find the things that you want them to do. A specific task, <coughs> if you want them to practice Stars and Stripes Forever, in practice first, you can make a specific task and go right to that score and say practice this, and the students will select their part from the score. You don't have to create 17 assignments. Template tasks, that's like the um, accompaniment for your choir. You're uploading an audio track as a template for the students into Soundtrap, um, and then they're recording themselves in another track. So that requires work on your end. And last but not least, and these kids are going to have a ton of free time, they can play with the software whenever they want, and that's great, and who knows what they're going to come up with. So let's take a look. I'm going to switch over to, to uh, my browser now and show you. This is the Music First Classroom, for those of you who have never seen it. Um, we have a software tab. If I click on any of that software, it is single sign-on. So I'll click on Focus on Sound. It logs me in. Actually, I've been out for so long, I had to re-log in, so just logging in. It logs me into Focus on Sound, and it remembers up here in the right-hand corner that Jim Frankel is currently logged in. I can go and click on the brass family, look up the tuba, which is the instrument I play, listen to recordings. I've got multiple recordings I can listen to. I've got uh, music that I can follow, the bouncing ball. By the way, you can assign the students any of these uh, pages. I've got YouTube videos. Uh, and um, hey, there's a video of Alan Bayer playing for the New York Philharmonic. We've got tests. So unlimited quizzes. I can go into the Brass family and say, hey, I'd like to, my students to take a quiz on the tuba. We've got lesson plans. You can assign the students a lesson on the trumpet. And the kids do this self-guided. Really cool stuff. Anyway, the software tab, we've got nine software titles. We've got a resources tab. So we've got Intune Monthly Magazine available for every one of your kids as well as lesson plans for you. So you can have them read an article, just post the link directly to that article. They read it. This is content that you don't have to find. It's there for you. I just open up Intune Monthly. It launches the, the latest um, edition of the magazine. And there's Tame Impala. I know my children love Tame Impala. I can open up the article copy the link, post it, and say, hey, kids, go read this, and then write a reflection. What, do you, what kind of 
questions would you ask Tame Impala if, if you could interview him? Resources. There's also musictheory.net built in. I'm sure you're all aware of that. And Shed the Music, one of my favorite resources. It is just like Khan Academy for music education. Bob Habersat is a band director in Illinois. Um, they're giving away um, this stuff. You can go into the melody and look at note reading. And what's great about this, these are pre if you see the triangle, that means it's a video. So I can click on that, go right to this video, and Bob teaches. He's a teacher. Assign the video. You can just copy this link and give that to the kids. Very great. There's a ton of resources, right? Content library. If I go into the Music First content library, we've got six big buckets of content. So let's say you're a choir director and you're looking, what on earth am I going to do with my kids? Hey, there's an onboarding unit of study to get your kids learning how to use music first, that you could just say, I'm assigning this. There's a course. There are two courses. There's a middle school choir course. I can open that up, and what this is is a collection of dozens of assignments that I can give my students. If I say, oh my goodness, I've got my middle school choir curriculum ready to go, you just click use this course now and say, this is, um, you know, Main Street Middle School Chorus, create class, and away you go. You got a class, it's ready to go. You can go up to your class calendar, I kid you not, and start dragging these things in. So tomorrow's St. Patrick's Day, I want my kids to do this little um, thing, this quiz on rhythm. Click, drag, <laughs> when is this due? It's due here. I hope you realize how cool that is. And by the way, we're gonna be doing trainings on this uh, the rest of the week, every single day, and we'll be emailing you that. So real drag and drop scheduling makes it very, very simple. That content library is a godsend. You can go into the library and say, hey, I'm just looking for chorus assessments. All I want is to give my kids some quizzes. There are 23 chorus tests that you can give your kids. Hey, here's a critique on Adele singing Turning Tables that is uh, choir focused. Cloudburst by w Eric Whitaker. So there's pre-made assignments. You don't have to make them yourself. I hope you realize uh, how much work that'll save you. So I'm going to just drop into teaching music classes online to give you an idea of some of the types of assignments you can do. And again, training-wise, I'll be showing you most of this, you know, these kind of things um, starting tomorrow at 10 a.m., so you'll see a schedule if you've signed up. So here are, I put together seven quick assignments. It, none of these took me very much time. Make your own music video. This is a to-do task. <coughs> I give it to the kids. You can share this in Remind so they can all get reminders. If you are a Google Classroom user, you can share it in Google Classroom. Just click share in Google Classroom and tell them which class you want to do it. Oh, let's do this with my concert choir, right? So they can access this through Google Classroom. If you're a cut time user, you can even share the assignment in cut time. So lots of great options there. But description, pick one of your favorite songs and submit it. The kids will upload a um, web link to their YouTube video. Uh, kids all know how to make YouTube videos. Don't worry about that. Say, hey, make a video. Uh, your own music video, post it to YouTube, and submit that link uh, for grading. So there's one idea, very, very simple. The listening log, a discussion post. By the way, I'm going to show you what the student view looks like in just a minute. Um, but hey, during the week, choose one piece of music that you like and write a 100-word review of it. What makes it a great song? Why do you like it? Again, I'll go back here. Invent your own instrument. That's what I was talking about earlier. Here, the students will invent their own instrument. They'll take a video or a picture and submit that for grading. You can even make your own rubrics in Music First Classroom. And when you click on the grade and when you have a rubric, the rubric pops up so that you can grade them right in the rubric and it will auto-tally for you. Um, practice your scales for band. So here we go. This is a practice first assignment. I click open in practice first. It logs me in directly to practice first. It opens up the scale pattern that I want my students to practice. I'm going to choose the tuba. There's my piece, and I can go ahead and record myself. Because I'm in teacher mode, there's no record button, but the students will have the ability to record. You can set the scoring threshold to something like 80, so as soon as they get over an 80, they can submit it, and you can give them full credit. Very simple, easy to use, um, great for uh, a voice and strings and band instruments, as well as piano and guitar. So that's practice first. Uh, let's go a couple more. Compose an eight-measure melody in note flight. Click on it. 
open it in note flight. It will bring me to a templated file that I've already created for my students. So the eight measures are already there. Let's delete the changes that I made yesterday. So here it is. There's some instructions. The kids can type their name in and they can start composing and submit that when they're done. If they're a student, they'll see a giant orange button right here, thanks to our friends at NoteFlight, that says Submit Assignment. Very, very, uh, very easy to do. By the way, we have dozens and dozens of pre-made NoteFlight tasks that are ready to go. You can just pull them right in and give them to your kids tomorrow. Uh, and two more just to show you, record yourself singing. And again, I'll show you what a student sees. They can sing their favorite song. They can play a specific piece of music. If you don't want to notate it and put it into practice first, just tell them the measure numbers you want and have them record it. And then last but not least, um, critique. You can uh, embed any YouTube video, any Vimeo video. In fact, you can embed any web content you want on here. Have them watch the video. <coughs> Again, all you need to do is find the video, embed it, and give them the assignment. Really simple to do. It might look hard. Um, before I show you the student interface, there's a question mark button up here at the top. This is our help section. Click on the help uh, button, then click tutorials. And there are videos that are short and sweet that show you how to do every feature I've just showed you. So you can watch those on your own time. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Now, what I'm going to do is show you what it looks like as a student. So I've logged into a student here as a student, and there's a record yourself singing. I'm gonna open that up just to show you what that looks like. I'll log in as a student. It timed me out because I haven't logged in in about an hour and a half. So here it is. I'm gonna re-record myself because I used this last night, uh, and I'm gonna start recording. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Fabulous. I'm sorry to sing. <laughs> uh, I can click play. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. If I'm happy with that, I can click submit. It's very important. And things like Google Classroom, when kids do this, they, they can absolutely do it. But I just want to show you how cool this is. If I go into um, my main dashboard, it shows me I have a little bell that, hey, somebody turned something in. Ooh, a web student recorded themselves singing. Let me hear it. I just need to click on the recording and it's embedded right in the gradebook. Nothing to download. Row, row, row your boat gently. I can go back in there, give them a grade on that. I'm definitely giving this guy a hundred. It was so good. I can add a comment. Uh, you are amazing. Right? Add that comment. And if it was terrible, by the way, the kids can comment back to you. Uh, if it's terrible, you just click clear submission and they can do it again. Uh, go back to being a student for a minute. The student sees now um, that this one has been submitted, so I don't have to do that. Uh, I can go into practice your scales for band just quickly to show you what that looks like. Now, I can't sing this low, so uh, let's see how well I do here. I'm going to hear it first. Let's give it a shot. You'll see what it looks like. Wish me luck. Give me two bars for nothing. Ba, 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 pleased with that, but it gave me some feedback that my tuning was 26 flat. Oh boy. If I mouse over that, it tells me exactly what I did wrong. By the way, nobody else does this, I promise. Expected silence, didn't get it. You sang a wrong note there altogether. You're really flat. Really great. By the way, I can zoom in to make that a little bit more easy to see, just so you're aware. Hope you realize how cool that is. If I'm happy with it, I click submit this to the teacher. Are you sure? Yes, I am. It submits that, I'm done. I go back here as a teacher, and I go here to my dashboard, and I have nothing to grade. Do you know why? Because it's been auto-graded for me. I can go into my gradebook, and there the web student got a 96 on their practice, their scales for band. If I wanna see a portfolio of all the work that they've done over this uh, school closure period, I just 
click on their name and there's a, uh, a uh, portfolio of all the student work that was done during that time. I hope you realize, or I hope you think it is cool as we think it's cool. Um, we definitely, um, we hear from our customers how much they love uh, that portfolio. Anyway, that gives you an idea of what the Music First Classroom does. Uh, I'm gonna go to the last slide now and talk about resources and then we'll wrap things up. Facebook, my friends, as you probably know, is just running wild with amazing music educators sharing resources. So the Music Teachers Facebook group, the Music First Teachers group, if you're not already a member, go to the Music First, one word, teachers, and ask to join. Lots of our customers have joined and they're, they're sharing ideas. There's a new group about music educators creating online learning. Um, there's great stuff. Just look around, <laughs> ask for advice. Um, there are amazing people, Amy Burns, Katie Wardrow, Barbara Friedman, uh, Will Kuhn, the folks from Time, uh, all these amazing, I'm, I'm forgetting everyone, of course, but there's amazing people, John Melenzak, always posting great stuff. Look for it and, and then incorporate it into your lessons. Um, I'm going to end by saying that uh, music educators, when it's normal times, we are the most giving and generous people to each other in the profession. Um, we share what we do with each other for the better of the cause. In this time, this exceptional time, when we're all freaking out, we're all stressed, we're all wondering how we can do this, I'm asking you all to be kind to each other, share work with each other. We here at Music First are doing our very, very best to get everybody hooked up and set up as quickly as possible. Uh, in the last two days, we had 1,800 school districts ask us for free accounts, and that takes time to set up. We're doing our very best. If you haven't heard from us, we're, we're, we'll, I promise we'll be in touch. Just be patient, um, but we'll, we'll be there for you. Again, uh, one last thing on the Music First class. Um, uh, you know, if you want a free extended demo, just go to musicfirst.com. Really important caveat on this. Um, we're only doing this for K-12 schools that have been closed for COVID, okay? We're getting a lot of bizarre people from around the world saying, hey, can I have free accounts? I want free software. That's not what this is about. This is about helping K-12 music educators. Uh, private schools, public schools, K-12, that's what we're doing. So if you, if you teach in a piano studio or you run a music conservatory or you have uh, a, a children's choir that's for profit, it's not what we're talking about. We're talking about school music teachers. That's who we're trying to help, and we have to cut, draw the line there somewhere. One important caveat for all of you to bear in mind, a lot of school districts are making emergency funding for this kind of thing. <clears throat> the only downside to our free extended demo, and <clears throat> it's a small one, but you're getting this amazing resource for free, is that at the end of the demo, we have to del delete everything you've done. So it's, it's going to be a moment of time that'll get you through it, but we do have to, lead, to delete everything at the end because we're paying tremendous server costs. So if your school has the money, you can get all of this stuff for your school for 50% off. Um, that'll take you through the rest of the school year. And then at the end of that, you can decide whether or not you want to continue with a subscription. And obviously, we hope that you would. Um, so ask your administrators and principals if there's emergency funding for that. The, the upside to the 50% off is that you won't lose your work at the end, all that great stuff. Uh, and if you go with the free extended demo, when the schools are back open and we're all back to normal, we're, we're going to have to delete it. Last but not least, check out our Music First podcast. We have a new episode launching this Thursday. A little bit of sanity in this crazy time. Go to our Facebook page, uh, Music First Teachers Group, um, and check us out. I really thank all of you uh, for being with us tonight. You're doing great stuff for your kids, or you wouldn't be uh, 7 p.m. On, on, on your own time doing this. So I appreciate all of you very, very much. And uh, we'll, get to, we'll take care of all of you. I'll be posting a video uh, on the Music First Facebook page as well as the Music First Teachers group. Um, the extended demo is, uh, is for as long as the closure, um, you know, with a limit up to the end of June. That's how long the extended demo is. Thank you all very much. Much appreciated. We're going to get through this together. Uh, and, and I'll see you on the other side. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.